So I get it. You're on your way to the fantasy basketball playoffs. You've secured your spot and you're ready to dominate and bring home that fantasy basketball championship. In this episode, we're going to talk about a few players you need to keep an eye on, whether that's for injuries, availability on the waiver wire. We want you to take a look at it so you can avoid any mishaps down the stretch. We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. So like you, I'm looking at my roster, thinking about what I need to do to prepare for the playoffs. Likely, your trade deadline has expired and passed, or it's coming up really soon. So I'm just going to talk to you guys about a few players you really need to pay attention to going down the stretch to see if it impacts your team. The first player I want to talk about is LaMelo Ball. So LaMelo Ball was drafted high. Many of us had great high hopes for him this fantasy basketball season. And unfortunately, we've all been disappointed. We have not seen the best version of him on the court, and that is rooted in his lack of availability. He is still injured. I believe he has a day-to-day tag, and he actually worked out with the team recently. But that's no, you know, that's no indication or signal that he will be coming back for your fantasy playoffs. So the question that I'm getting in our community, online, TikTok, Instagram, Discord, all of the places, right? What do I do with LaMelo Ball? First answer, if in fact you have an IR spot, just hold LaMelo Ball. What kind of deal are you going to get for him at this point, if in fact your trade deadline has not passed, right? What kind of deal can you even get for him? So I would hold if you have an IR spot. Now, if you don't have an IR spot and you are in a prime position to make the playoffs, there are no seeding issues. Like you're not trying to get to to win a bye by having the best record. If you're just going to be in the playoffs anyway, and it's only a few games left in the season, then I would just ride it out. If you don't have an available IR spot, just ride it out, get nimble and creative on the waiver wire to make sure that you can fill those slots. But for the most part, I wouldn't, you know, do anything crazy if I didn't have an IR spot like dropping LaMelo, right? Now, let's say you're losing. This is the final scenario. You're losing You're like at the cusp of making the playoffs, but you need to have a strong finish down the stretch. And every roster slot matters. Every roster slot matters. And because of that, you need to make a move with LaMelo. I would recommend in this case not to drop LaMelo. That would be crazy, right? This is your first round pick. Maybe if you're in a a shallow league, maybe he's your early second round pick. You don't want to drop this guy. What I would do is I would try to salvage the deal and sell low on LaMelo Ball. It's something that, again, we don't talk about here on this channel because we don't typically sell low. We only teach and preach that people sell high. But when it's time for the playoffs, guys, this is an overarching theme and, and rule. It is ruthless freaking cutthroat at this time you do it people that you would have never dropped when you get into the playoffs you will consider dropping them for that extra roster slot because if you don't win there is no tomorrow so i'm gonna sit here and hold on to Lamelo ball and not make the playoffs for decorations huh where they do that at what is it so you could do a screenshot of your freaking team and Share it. Like, hey, guys, look at my team. I had LaMelo Ball, but you didn't make the playoffs. It's wild to me. With that said, you got to make tough decisions in this time of the year when we talk in fantasy basketball. So that's the first guy we want to talk about. The second one is kind of a heartbreaker for me, Trey Young. If you follow the channel, you probably know I live in the Atlanta area, and we are heartbroken about the surgery that Trey Young is going to be having on his finger. We know he's going to be out for a number of weeks, and chances are he might not make it back for your fantasy playoffs unless you go right to the end of the season. I think that it's a projective that he's he's going to be reevaluated in like four weeks. It's no bueno, man. It's not good. So for Trey Young, 
the question that I'm getting, very similar to LaMelo, what do I do with Trey Young? And this one, I would give the same exact answer that I gave for LaMelo. If you have an IR spot, put him in your IR spot and pray and hope that he comes back in time. Second, if in fact you are in a winning position and you don't have an IR spot, I would just ride it out and kind of manipulate the roster using waivers to kind of get through. And then the last step is if you're struggling, if you're on that, you know, bright yellow struggle bus, you know, with hot dog water in the back, in the tank, you got to make a tough cutthroat decision. And at that point, you might want to consider selling low. The next guy is Kelly Olenek. So um, they just reported that uh, Yaka Pertle is struggling with an ankle injury. So because of that, there's going to be some opportunity for Kelly Olenek. He has standalone value anyway, right? Especially in a deeper league, if you're talking a 14-team, 16-team, 18-team league. Like, he has value anyway, right? Standard um, you know, he has standalone value, I should say. But with an injury to Yaka Pertle, oh baby, he is a must roster player, especially in 12 team leagues. 10 team leagues, I would even say there as well, you know. Uh, so if he's available, I wouldn't wait until the news about Yaka Pertle's ankle comes out. This is why this is one of the reasons why. I'm doing this episode today is because I wanted to get this information out to you in a very timely fashion, right? Go grab him, hold, see what happens. Don't pick him up and get frustrated if Yaka Pertle plays because this could develop over the next couple of games. So just grab Kelly Olenek and then hold, hold Kelly. Next up is... A whole team. We're not going to talk about a player here. We're going to talk about a whole team. Yes, I am talking about your least favorite team in fantasy basketball, the Memphis Grizzlies. When I say stinking up the joint, this is the epitome of stinking up the joint. Like dumpster juice on steroids with the dirty sippy cup. It is a bad look, y'all. My man Adam King from Fantasy Basketball International tweeted today. I'm paraphrasing something down the lines of the Memphis Grizzlies have ruined fantasy basketball officially. They have officially ruined fantasy basketball. And I want to say I agree. Started out with Ja. What are you going to expect from Ja Morant, right? You expect him to do something crazy on camera with the blicky, right? He going to pull out the blicky, go on, on Facebook Live, Go to the, you know, go to the club, go to the nudie bar, all of the things that he does on live, get in trouble, get kicked off. This time, it was a legit injury, right? A freak injury in practice, out for the season. So that was the first blow. Marcus Smart, Marcus Smart had already been banged up. We got ne- more negative, um, you know, news about Marcus Smart. He doesn't look like he's coming back. Then the straw that broke. The baby camel's back. Desmond Bain. Like if I like if you had Bain, you were like, okay, like Moran is out, but like I'ma eat because I got Bain, right? I'm gonna change his name from Desmond Bain to Desmond Pain. Because that's what Bain managers have experienced over the last few weeks. And then there were like these reports, these teasers. Hey, he's gonna come back earlier than expected. Blah zee blah. Yo, heartbreaking. But there is good news. Vince Williams, uh, Gigi Jackson, and and Triple J is still healthy. There's still opportunity here, right? So when players go down, we talk about this all of the time on the channel. When players go down, that creates opportunity for someone else, right? Vince Williams would be the person I'll be looking at if he's available on your waiver wire. Grab him, hold, and see what happens. Then, in terms of Triple J for Jaron Jackson Jr., if Jaren, if your trade deadline has not passed, I would strongly consider making a move to get Jaron Jackson Jr. off of your roster. Why? 
The Grizzlies have nothing to play for. The Grizzlies have absolutely nothing to play for. So, so risking one of their key components to their core in meaningless games does not add up. Now, the league has new rules around resting players. The NBA is very creative about how they can get players rest and how rest and how they can get them out of the game. So I would, if my trade deadline did not pass and I had Triple J on my squad, I would be on the phone trying to make deals. And I have a foolproof, you know, um, technique that I use. If you guys want that, please let me know in the comments or you can shoot me an email at info at believeinfantasy.com. So there's more, right? There is more. Uh, Just on a side note, Kimba Walker dropped 92 points in an overseas game, a professional game. He dropped 92 points with 14 three-pointers. This was like recently. I think it was last night. What? 92 points? Yo, your man is out here cooking with hot bacon grease. It is not a game. So I know what many of you are here for. And this is something I'm trying to cover and I'm trying to be professional and I'm trying to be mature. So we're going to go into it. We have to talk about Grady Dick. Yes, we have to talk about the Dickmeister. Grady Dick has been cooking, y'all. He didn't get many minutes early on in the season, right? There were talks about him in the preseason. I even drafted him in a couple of spots, dropped him since because he wasn't getting any burn. Dick was getting no burn, right? He wasn't getting any opportunity to even show what he can do. Then, recently, the the Raptors have kind of started working Dick into the lineup, right? He's getting into the mix, and he's actually getting a, an increasing amount of opportunity. So Grady Dick is a pretty versatile guard. You know, I think he can play a few positions, and he is getting better and better as the opportunities present themselves. With that being said, for the waiver wire, if Dick is available, I would grab him. If Dick is available, I would grab Dick. Grady Dick. I think that uh, for the rest of the season, the Raptors, again, very similar to some of the other teams we talked about, like the Hornets and the Grizzlies, they are not playing for anything. All they're trying to do is give their young talent an opportunity. So down the stretch, they will test out Dick to see how he does. To see how he does. I think I'm going to move on from that topic. I'll try to get better on that one. But if you enjoyed the video and the audio version, I'm trying to do more content down the stretch of the season. So I'm trying to cook up here in my car studio. I got a little mic here so I can make sure we maintain some decent quality. Um, So if that is something that you want, if you want me to continue during my lunch break, like I'm literally here eating apples and daggone sandwiches, right? Doing a little bit of research before. Let me let you guys see. Prepare my notes to make sure that I can provide you some value. If you want more episodes like this where I'm like casually cooking up in the car, providing you guys value, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best, especially as we go down the stretch of the playoffs. Another thing, every season we have, uh, and we've, this is our third full season, right, of doing this show. Every year at the end of the fantasy basketball season, we see a drop off where people, and I'm guilty of this too. I've done this in the past. When I'm like done with fantasy, I like sometimes I'll delete the app because I might have lost, right? Do me a big favor. If you support this channel, if you've had an opportunity to listen to our content or watch our content over this season or seasons past, please stay subscribed to what we're doing and double down and check in because throughout the off season, we're going to be preparing you for next year, but we're also going to just talk fantasy. Uh, we're just going to talk NBA content as well and fantasy, right? So please make sure that you stay 
locked in. Uh, other than that, I just wanted to offer some gratitude to everybody in our Discord community. Super grateful for all of you guys, everyone on TikTok, everyone on Instagram, and of course, everyone on YouTube and the folks who subscribe to the podcast. Big shout out to the Believe Network for having us in their podcast network. We're super grateful for them. And at the end of the day, the most important thing, don't forget, play the waivers, set your lineups, and believe in fantasy. Let's <laughs> go.